Hey everyone, I'm Johnny Lang, and this is Around the Hood with KSL Cars. So this is my 2006 Ferrari F430. It's a special car to me. Uh, 15 years ago, my wife and I traveled to Italy, and we went to the Ferrari factory, uh, and uh, I drove my first Ferrari on the streets of Italy, and it was a Ferrari F430. It was a memorable car, and I thought to myself, you know what, one day I'm gonna have one of these cars, and so I got it. Uh, this one stuck out because of the black uh, Nero uh, color, as, as they call it, and of course the tan interior. I thought there was some really good contrast. But this particular car has what they call an F1 transmission, which is kind of an automatic. It's really a, a manual transmission with uh, paddle shifters, and uh, they do come in manual. The manual cars these days are actually double the price. They've gone up in popularity, and it's been a little crazy to see that market. I enjoy the paddle shifting. You feel the shifts, uh, and uh, you know it just kind of completes the package. This one is the fun weekend car and uh, certainly gets a lot of great conversations and uh, it's been a lot of fun. This is my 2018 Lexus LC500. 2018 is the first year of the LC500. And I just gotta say, this is like one of the uh, most special cars that I've, I've owned. I've had over a hundred cars and uh, you know, typically I, I, I keep a car for a year or two. I've had this one for four years now and uh, it just checks a lot of boxes for me. Obviously my size, I'm super comfortable in it. It's plenty fast. It's got almost 500 horsepower from the factory. I've taken it on some 2,600 mile road trips and it's not uncommon to see 30 to 33 miles per gallon on the highway, which is just nuts for a, a V8. These cars are special because they were made in the same plant as the LFA, which, uh, you know, that is like Lexus's flagship sports car. They're over a million dollars these days. And Lexus built a specific plant in Motomachi, Japan, where they made those LFAs and then they designed and made these. Well, I think it'll probably stay in the garage for, for quite some time. So this is my 1984 Chevy. It's actually a Chevy, not a GMC, but it's the same thing. A-Team van. And uh, this was one of the coolest bands in my childhood, watching that on TV. And uh, I hopped on KSL Cars and I found a plain white plumbing van for just uh, not much money that was here locally. And I thought, I'm gonna buy and I'm gonna build my own A-Team van. And that's what I did. So this uh, was built in uh, 2020 um, in my garage and I did everything. Got the fiberglass kit sourced from a company in California that's no longer uh, fabricated the front uh, bar and added all of the uh, the fun lights and i actually painted this in the garage by myself it's not pristine by any means i like to tell people it's about a 20 footer looks great from 20 feet away for halloween in 2021 i even dressed up as mr t uh it was a lot of fun i still every time i'm in this thing i get thumbs up and people wanting to talk to me about it. Well, here are a couple of my Land Cruisers. I'm a big Toyota Land Cruiser fan, big Toyota 4x4 fan. Many years ago, I had a pretty cool Toyota four-wheel drive club in the state of Utah. We'd go down to Moab and do a lot of off-roading. Um, this is a 2013 Land Cruiser with the V8. And I say that because the new Land Cruisers will no longer have the V8. This is my baby. 1996 FZJ Land Cruiser. And this is the car that I have owned for 19 years now, which is the longest car that I've ever owned. Um, my wife and I found this in Oakland, California at a dealership. And we flew in with backpacks and purchased this. And then we hit up three national parks sleeping in the back. We went to Walmart got some cheap coolers and uh, cheap sleeping bags and made a big adventure out of it. Over the last 19 years, I have built it up uh, 
put the lift kit on it and the big 35 inch tires and the ARB bumper and the winch. Uh, it has seen all of the trails in Moab. It's been on the Rubicon in California. So this is technically my first car. Uh, it's German. I don't know the make, but uh, as a young boy, I loved cruising this thing around and it stuck around my whole life. I don't think I could fit in it these days, but I still got it. This is a 1979 Pontiac Trans Am, and I've had this for a couple years. Uh, I found this one in Las Vegas, Nevada. As I got into it, there were a lot of things that uh, were not done properly, and so I've spent over the last you know year or two kind of going through all the electrical and, and fine-tuning some things. Uh, this car is fond to me because of Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, again, another uh, movie that came out during my childhood. Um, for those Smokey and the Bandit fans, they know that the first episode was actually a 1977, which was really a 76 with the 77 front end on it. And then this particular year, the 79 was used in Smokey and the Bandit 2. Um, I've always just had a, a, a love for these cars. It's got the it's got T-tops and uh, it's got the uh, factory Oldsmobile 403 engine. And they put two different engines in, in these Trans Ams. And the most desired is the Pontiac 400. And apparently Pontiac ran out of those engines and so they started using the 403 from Oldsmobile. Just a great cruising car. Like I said, you take the T-tops off. Uh, another car that you get the thumbs up. Uh, and yeah, for Halloween, I was Burt Reynolds and uh, even convinced my wife to put on the, the wedding dress, uh, like in the movie, Froggy, and uh, we went to a Halloween party, so another fun car. Well, that's it for this edition of Around the Hood. Thanks for watching.